Tell us what we need to know. Speak up. Whether it's beneficial information or essential to our lives. Script some monologues, even poetry or rhymes. Give us some food for thought. For we hungry for the drive. And in return, we supply you with feedback. Therefore, you and I both nourish the drive inside of us. Speak now or never. Either that or remain a cloud of dust. Some of us are here to speak. Inspirational quotes to sustain your focus. Keep you from holding pieces, dropping out and off the streets. That's somebody's story, what's yours? Speak now or hold your peace. Speak now or never. You're watching Open Mic TV, a show for the unspoken and outspoken. I'm your host, Fennell Wilkins. This is a show for poetry, spotlights, and documentaries. Today, I'm adding a little twist to today's episode. Instead of it being a full-blown documentary, it's a poetisode. What is a poetisode? A poetisode is brand new to Open Mic TV. It's poetry with a visual. And a little documentary on who the poet is. Here's Jeff, today's poet. Lord, it's so hard living this life. A constant struggle from each Jeff. and every day. Um, from Atlanta, born in Fort Worth, Texas, bred in Atlanta, different sections. Um, what got me into poetry was I always, I always, so there was like this balancing mechanism I was always trying to do between either like rapping or saying something insightful but I never realized they can like merge. This world is a swirl of an Oreo blizzard. It's made of crane filling with just droppings of niggas in it. Knowing the intent is to enjoy your vanilla shake, revolutions made them sprinkle us into their cup. Yet ever since then, That's I became really passionate been. about it. Because not only could I Promise. entertain people, but yeah. making something, you know, rhyme, the little sweet rhyme scenes American in there, pie, say something. I was saying some of substance that and even if they just pondered over one line later, then it was a mission accomplished. Power lies where a man puts it. And if you draw the power um, line, power I lies where a man puts line it. Would be crooked. Um, often, whether it's on the smallest of scales to... Uh, deciding whether or not I'm going to watch this TV show or if I'm going to go and meditate. Um, you put your power either in the programming of your mind from another source or the program of your mind from your own source. And it's as simple as that for folks to realize that you will always have a choice in doing what you want to do. I was lucky enough to spend 10 months of my life in prison. Um, I went to Morehouse to learn how to be a better man, um, which it did show me, it did teach me. I learned so many things, I got positioned, got, doors were open, but prison is where I learned the things that I was really looking for. Um, manhood, respect, um, but the biggest thing that I learned while I was in prison was um, that everybody's just nurtured a certain way and everybody's just going after everything they influence. So we're all just birth, chance, and time, right? But we're all nurtured in different ways, in different areas, in different locations that make us have different ideas of what's right and whether my right is putting this pistol on you so I can have some money to feed my family or my right is to go get a job so I can feed my family is still my right. Now they call me 21 the poet and that was cool. Um, that was real cool because it was love. One, I was able to go in there and stand on my own two feet. Nobody messed with me. Two, I was able to go in there and do what I was passionate about, something that I love. And I appreciate the setting of prison and jail that just said, hey, you got to sit here in this box for so many hours. Because in that box, I was writing. So this is power lines. Power lines where a man puts it. The choice is always yours.
Power lies where a man puts it. And if you draw the power line, I bet that line will be crooked, hooked in the rise of a mastermind while the common man is stuck looking for signs in a foreign land. So the common man becomes just a tourist. So for those of you all that are just joining us, welcome to the home of half-told histories and power structures built on mysteries where they milk the unseen to get folks to focus on their insufficiencies a mental penitentiary where practice is still chasing perfect as correction officers encourage him that it's worth it, tell him he's undeserving, tell him anything that prevents his inner essence from being exerted. So though practice and perfect are both nouns, practice forgets his inner verbiage. And the disguised lies of a mastermind, power lies where a man puts it. The power line can be used to underline the undermining forces that helps us to make poor choices. In our minds, there's a multiplicity of voices shouting, yelling, and screaming, but we never question what the noise is, so question it. Question what it is and how it lives and how we think. How it links peace to frivolous things brings illusions into our reach. Reach for the knob on the radio and allow the noise to speak. Reach for the button on the television and see it on the screen. Reach for yourself in the mirror and is what you perceive as the reason you can't be all that you can be. So question it. Question who created this whole concept of acceptance. Why must you fit a mold or continue to be neglected? Why is it considered offensive when you're in your cultural element? Why can't you speak how you speak and that alone can't be rendered eloquent? How the hell does the SAT even prove that you're intelligent? The necessity of college and who made that a prerequisite? The purpose of meeting professionals when networking has an adequate. Why is everyone wearing a mask and when did hiding behind it become so prevalent it's evident? That questions are the only things that we should relish in. Because the moment that we stop questioning, we've forgotten what power lies. lines where a man puts it. Jeff, he said it best. He did not let his situation go into prison and getting kicked out of Morehouse stop him. That concludes today's episode of OMTV. I'm Fennell Wilkins. Until next time. Lord, it's so hard living is life. A constant struggle each and every day. Some wonder why I'd rather die than to continue living this way. This world is a swirl of an Oreo blizzard. It's made of crane filling with just droppings of niggas in it. Knowing the intent is to enjoy a vanilla shake, revolutions made them sprinkle us into their cup. Yet ever since then, that's all we've ever been to them. Crumbs. Droppings from their sweet American pie. The one stuffed with voracious lies and empty pride. Topped with dough and cheese as the profit motor keeps its gear in drive. So it hired a couple of crumbs from the slums of Niggerville, USA. Just to relay a message to their fellow former slaves that the only thing that matters in this world is to get paid. Mm. And the cars, and the clothes, and the holes, encouraging them to dig holes in their souls just so they can stick a holes in it and fill them with their version of how the story unfolded. Run to link a piece of American pie in front of them, not giving a fuck if it's molded, pretending to be holy, taking oaths, holding the Bible, knowing damn well the devil's inside them. So they carry on living a lie and prancing in a position of power just to enliven their propaganda. One meanders through exceptions, exclusions, and word uses that keeps crumbs clueless to what they're doing. Oh, we can't read, but we sure can see how y'all are screwing us over and over and over keeping us rolling from the many turns they've had to stir our mishaps in fact they'll tell you to relax in that I'm just another angry black man still not over the past and lost in terms of current reality 
But the truth is, equality is merely a label that was never put on all the boxes. Because if you happen to be a product of an environment that taught you to show your boxes, land your ass in a courtroom, then evaluate your options. So many of our partners and brothers and fathers and lovers fell victim to unfair judgment because the judges couldn't see the depths of their plight. Well, lack of education and employment opportunities led them to be crooks of the night. An addictive fight for a life where mama doesn't have the crop because she doesn't have money for the lights. Or the two kids, hungry, rubbing their tummies because daddy doesn't have the money right now. But daddy is gone for caring for his home and now the little boy struggles to fill his shoes. Falling in the same trap. Tries to fight but get zapped because the judge cannot see it like that. So they'll throw around these statistics to imply our black fathers are missing when they aren't. They're in prison. A system that leaves them victims of stigmas reminiscent of racism. A matrix invented to mold a dimension of second class citizens. Painted these same men with all these images of viciousness. When that synonym better describes the mandatory minimum. The inconsiderately senseless provision that limits black resilience. The flames of Clinton ignited by Reagan and Nixon licked this wick of a bomb from Bush's terrorism. So ask me, how is it to live in a system of hidden agendas? Well, you're just a citizen trying to comprehend this concept of independence. How? Many are blind and cannot find the truth cause no one seems to really know. But I won't accept that this is how it's gonna be. Devil, you got to let me and my people go.